Hey there, thank you so much for purchasing an art kit, or if you received one as a gift, congratulations. Um, we are going to be painting this very cute, lovely llama today um, from start to finish. So gra gather up all your supplies that were in your art kit, put on some comfy clothes, cover your surface that you're painting on with um, something that doesn't matter if it gets paint on because this does stain. Turn on some jams, grab you a drink and some snacks, and let's get to it. All right, so I have all my colors. Um, I have reused this plate. I like to just let the paint dry out and reuse it, and then I feel like I'm helping the environment a little bit, not wasting so much. So I have my red, yellow, and blue, turquoise, purple, brown, black, and white, which came in the kit. Um, you could leave all your paints in your tins and then just scoop them out when you need to make your own colors, right? I have all my brushes, although we may not be using all of them. And then I have napkins so that I can uh, dry my brush when I wash it. And then I have a water cup and an old plastic cup that I just reuse. I rinse out and reuse. We're going to start with our um, big brush. Okay. We're going to start with this guy and we are going to paint this very lovely llama. Remember you get to switch it up. You get to make all your own background colors. There's no wrong answer. So you guys can just have at it and go for it. Um, I am going to kind of make, I think I'm going to make up a green. So in order to do that, I'm going to take some yellow. I'm going to add just a little bit of blue at a time. We're talking chocolate chip amount. And we're going to mix that in just like this. And that gives us a lighter green. I want to go for darker green, so I'm going to add more blue in there. The more blue you add, the darker it will be. One thing that I've always misjudged when I'm painting, even still to this day after making hundreds of paintings, is how much paint to make. Um, so it's better to make too much than not enough, honestly, okay? I'm gonna mix in just a little bit more green. I mean blue, excuse me, to darken up my green just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and then I am gonna get this going up here at the top. Now, right here by the llama, I wanna be careful, so I'm gonna turn my brush sideways. I like to hold my brush just like I hold a pencil. You can hold it kind of where the metal and the handle touch, um, or a little further back, but I would not go closer than the handle and the metal part, okay? So now that I have the color on there and a nice thin outline, I can go in and just sort of swirl my brush and get it all filled in. Now let's say you wanted to create like an ombre effect or something like that. Um, there's a couple of things that you can do. I do like to paint my edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the top and the side done real quick. So the very, very edge and the very, very top. That way if somebody walks up to your painting like from the side, it has a more completed look. Okay, so now I'm gonna kinda of come up here, do a little outlining. I promise I'll show you that ombre look in just a minute. There we go. There, and we can swirl that in just like that. Now Artsy Rose started almost I guess officially um, six years ago this month. Um, it has its technical sixth birthday this month, although we did not open until February. Um, but we we started renovating and, and we had our, our location six years ago this month. Um, and it started out as a dream I had when I was younger, and then my parents kind of helped me get it going, and then my husband and I took over. He does the website, and um, my son even is uh, 
he's in college and he's taking classes to learn how to do web design as well, a different kind of coding system, but he helps occasionally when he wants to earn some extra money. <laughs> um, and so, and then my daughter, she helps draw canvases and make up art kits. And so it is truly a family business and it truly is a little small local business here in Oklahoma City. And um, it's kind of my, or it was, um, my home away from home before all the crazy virus hit. Here we go. Okay, so I have the background done just like that. And um, I am gonna kind of give it a little highlight or like an ombre type effect, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab me just a little bit of white, just a little bit. And then what I can do is I can start blending that in just like that. And blend, blend, blend. And the more you blend, the less noticeable the white is. See how it just softens it up? The less you blend, the more noticeable it is. So I guess it could, if you blend it a little less, it could kind of give it a um, snow flurry-ish type effect, I guess. So I am gonna get this all on here. And I love that this is a recording for you guys because of course you can pause me or play me at any time. And please feel free to tweak it how you want to. You do not have to do like me. You can do you. And um, that's what's so amazing about art is my way is not the only way. It's not like math, you know, two plus two is four. Like there's lots of ways to get to an end result. Okay, so there's some white on the top, which is nice because it gives it a nice little blending effect. And then as I go down, I run out of white on my brush and it just sort of fades and gets a little darker, a little darker, right? I'm gonna get just a little bit more so I can do the same thing on this side. There we go. When I'm trying to blend, I hold my brush a little further back, okay? So, I'm gonna work on this, ta-da-da. All right, now, here's a cool trick. You guys are gonna think I'm crazy. Um, so, I am, oh, I'm getting a shout out. Hey, Zoe, I'm doing a recording. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna take red. It is green's complement, okay? Um, so they're across from each other on the color wheel. And when I mix this in, what happens is it's gonna darken up my green, okay? And that is not super noticeable because I just did a teeny bit at a time. So if you want it to be more noticeable, you mix in more red. Although, if you mix in too much, I will say it will go brown. Anytime you mix complementary colors, they will turn brown if you use too much. So let's try this and see what happens. I can put this down here and see how it's a little noticeably different. Not major different, but a little noticeably different. And so I can kind of work this up and it should start to blend into my lighter background. There we go, just like that. So that's kind of cool, right? So that's a whole ombre effect. It goes from darker to medium to lighter. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side because I want it to have balance or symmetry. Sometimes that's good to have symmetry in artwork and sometimes it's fun to just be abstract, but the llama is symmetrical, so I figure maybe my painting could be a little symmetrical too, right? Okay, there we go. And then if I wanted it to be a little darker at the bottom, I could grab a little bit more red, mix that in with maybe part of my green, not all of it, and then I can put that in right down here. Now, a lot of times people think that they should add black to a color to darken it up. And that does work for some colors. For example, if I wanted to make like a plummy purple, right? I could put black in that. But it's also good to use a color's complement when you're mixing. And that gives you a darker 
um, a darker version without going too dark or muddying it up. Okay, so this is a fabulous background. We can definitely go back to it and add like some snowflakes and stuff, right? So to clean your brush, the brush goes in the water and then we smush and swirl, smush and swirl, just like this. Okay, there we go. Smush, swirl, smush, swirl, smush, swirl. Now, tapping means you're gonna splash water everywhere. If you don't wanna splash your neighbor or all over the table or your painting, what I do instead is wipe, wipe, just like that. That gets the extra water out. And then the next step is super duper, duper important. And that involves us drying our brush. Number one, it gets all the extra paint out. And number two, most importantly, it gets the water out. If you leave water in your brush and you dip it in the paint, it's gonna water down all of your paint, okay? So I'm gonna switch now. I think I'm gonna try out the biggest one, but it has rounded corners, okay? So I'm gonna use this one to paint in my llama. Um, you could definitely do a white llama. Oh, that would be so pretty for Christmas. Um, I actually haven't even thought of that. You could do a tan llama. You could do a gray llama. So you kind of do you whatever makes you happy. Let's say we want to do a tan llama, okay? What I do when I lighten my colors is I pull white over to the color, okay? Got a little too much white there. And then I get just a little bit of brown in at a time, and I mix that. Up, just like that and you can go for a soft tan or of course you can go darker it's really up to you so I'm gonna keep it fairly soft we never want to paint with a globby brush so I tried to kind of roll it off if you can't roll it you can always kind of scrape it off on the side just like that okay and it gets the extra out again you want to hold your brush just like a pencil I'm gonna go ahead and paint over all of this First, and I have to be really careful next to the edge because I don't want to drag background color onto my llama because guaranteed the background is still wet. If you don't trust yourself with that, you've got two choices. You can walk away from it for a little bit, let it air dry, go, you know, do something else, take a breather, make a snack, whatever it may be come back to it, it should be dry enough to where you could work on the llama part and not worry about pulling in the background. This is a really great option for kids if they're painting this, okay? Um, or if you don't wanna be patient and let it dry on its own, you could blow dry. That is the absolute only reason I use a blow dryer at my house is to paint or to dry canvases. I wash my hair at nighttime so that I don't have to blow dry. I don't know why I don't like it. I think because my hair is so thick and it takes forever. <laughs> so notice that I just fill in or I outline just like we did on the background, outline and then fill in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get in here as well, just like that. There we go. And around this side, trying not to get on the glasses. If you don't trust yourself with this bigger brush that has the rounded corners, you could totally switch brushes and do a different one for the um, tight spaces and then use this bigger one for the bigger spaces, right? Okay. There we go. And then I'll outline again here, come across the bottom, and come down here. And I got a little bit right there, don't I? Then we'll get it all filled in just like that. Okay, so now that I have the llama all filled in, and that didn't take long at all, right? Now I can go in, and I guess I could have just done this from the beginning, but and go ahead and fill in her fur, but we're gonna make this fur look much lighter at the end. So if your llama is dark, you may not want to do this if you chose a dark color for your llama because we want her hair to look lighter, okay? 
So that's pretty much the whole llama filled in. Oh, not her nose. What am I thinking? And I'm just gonna paint right over those nostrils. I'm not even gonna try to paint around those. There we go. We're gonna go back and fix those nostrils in a bit, okay? So this is what it looks like, um, just base layer. I have a whole process that you have to totally trust whenever you're painting with me. Um, I work in layers and I work in a lot of layers. So this is just layer one on everything, okay? Um, so now um, I'll go in and I'll add some more fun stuff here in a minute. Um, you know what? I I think I'm gonna paint her mouth, but of course I'm gonna make that darker later, okay? So I'm just gonna let this brush hang out in the water for now. And I am going to grab my brush that is flat, but it still has rounded corners, okay? And I am going to, um, I wanna kinda make a little darker version of this tan. So I'm gonna pull in some brown not in all of my tan, just in part of my tan, okay? And I am going to just kind of give her a little bit of a hairy look, okay? So I'm doing this, doop, 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 just real, real quick motions, okay? Just like this. There we go. Try not to paint her face, but if you do, that's okay. It can be fixed. So the reason why we're doing these real quick motions like this is to give her a hairy look. Okay. So dab, 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 dab and pull, dab and pull, dab and pull. All right. There we go. Awesome. And here, just like that. Okay. Now we're going to um, do a little bit of this up here on her head. So I'm just going to kind of darken this up just a smidge in spots, kind of give her just a little bit of a hairy look. There we go. I mean, it wouldn't even hurt anything if you got a little bit out of the lines as long as your background's dry, right? I'm not going to come all the way down because I'm going to wind up lightening right there in the middle. We're going to give her some hair here in a bit. Okay, here we go. Just like that. Fabulous. Up and around those little ears. Up and around these little ears. There we go. And again, remember, be careful with that background color. All right. Oops, see, I got some background color in there. Darn. Okay. There we go. So we're just dabbing and pulling and dabbing and pulling. Awesome. Okay. So now I'm going to take this darker color that I made, but I'm going to put just the teeny, teeny, tiniest amount of black in there and kind of go for a tannish grayish. Okay, just, oop, might have been too much. Maybe not. Okay. And we're going to put this color inside the ears. So we're going to put another layer on top of the inside of the ears, but this layer is darker. Just like this. And then remember, anytime you're making your own custom colors, it's really hard to match them again. So make sure that you make enough of them, right? Because you don't want to run out and then have to try to match it up. All right. There we go. Ta-da. Okay, and then I'm going to use the same color on the lip area. There we go. There we go. 
awesome. Okay, now we're gonna use the same color right in the eye area as well. And I know she's looking kind of funny. You just gotta trust me. Just trust me, guys. Okay. And let's go ahead and do her mouth down here too. And we'll probably have to darken that up even more because otherwise it just blends right in, right? So I'm gonna add just a little bit more black to that color I was just using. And we're gonna kind of go in like that. Oh, that's not that noticeable, is it? Okay, kind of darken that up a little. There we go. And right in here, there. I love it. Okay, and then I said we would go in here just so it would be more noticeable. Darken that up a little. And again, if you don't trust yourself with this smaller flat brush with the rounded corners, you can always totally use a smaller brush, okay? Um, I think I'm even going to put just a smidge there and a smidge there, okay? So she's looking quite fabulous and starting to have some lots of different values, right? Values are good in paintings because it creates sense of depth. Um, things that are closer, things that are further. Um, it just gives our paintings just a good feeling, Go kind of outline around that edge. Outline around that edge. There we go. Okay. Um, clean this brush off real good. There we go. And wipe on the side and dry, dry, dry. Okay. Now I am going to take some of that tan and white this time, so I make a real, real light tan, okay? Tan and white, so I make a really light tan. Same flat brush with the rounded corners. And this time, I am gonna get some hair going on. As long as your background is dry enough, you can definitely do this step. And notice that I start at the body or right next to the neck, and I flick out. Flick, 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 flick. If you want to completely hide all your Sharpie lines, anytime you have the chance to paint on top of them, do it, and then it will eventually disguise those Sharpie lines. Okay? There we go. There we go. So in addition to owning my business, I've got background color on there. we got to wipe it off. I also teach elementary art to kindergarten through fifth grade in a school district close by. Uh, well, right down the street <laughs> for my studio. And um, I've been doing that for 15 years. That's so crazy, guys. So crazy. Okay. Um, but it really like just kind of gives me purpose and keeps me going. So I know that being a teacher was definitely my calling in whatever capacity that is in, whether it be at my studio or in my classroom. There we go. Okay. If you wanted to continue this on up, you could just to kind of hide those edges. It's up to you. And then if you wanted the ears to have a little bit of fur, you could definitely bring some down the ears. That kind of gives it a fun effect. So really guys, you can have as much fun with this fur as you want. I've had some of my uh, guests, students, customers, whatever we want to call them, um, have really hairy llamas. And then I've had some just do a little bit of hair. So it's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and kind of curve out those ears a little bit. Give them a little bit of a highlight up here. There we go. Oop. There we go. Okay. 
Then I'm also gonna put the same color right here in the middle and she is gonna have some fun hair right here coming up from the center of her glasses. So straight up and then it'll go diagonal, 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 just like that, okay? There. Might give her a little bit of lightness right in here. And, oh, <laughs> paint on my elbow. I am, okay, that is dry. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of black and go ahead in a baby brush and go ahead and paint in her nostrils with a thin, thin layer of black. Real thin layer. And I might as well, while I have it on my brush, paint her eyes. If you don't trust yourself with these small areas like this, you could most definitely, keep sticking my elbow in the paint, most definitely use your Sharpie. As long as you are sharpening on a dry area, you could definitely use your Sharpie. It's so much easier to control, for real. There we go. And you might kind of mess up her little shine in her eye when you're doing this, but that's okay because I'm going to show y'all a trick here after a bit to put that shine back in her eye, okay? Something about this room stops at my nose, guys, every time. I've got to figure it out. There we go. Okay, I think those look about the same size. Just about, they don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. Go ahead and do a little outline there and then sort of smudge it. There we go, so it kind of blends a little, is not such a harsh line. Okay, and I could put a little bit more in that gray from earlier, kind of work. A little bit of that shadow on up in here. It's not wanting to spread. There it goes. See, it, it was drying out on me, so I dampened it up a little with the water in my cup, and then that helps it to spread easier. Yay. Okay. There. Here we go. Okay. I love adding that little bit of depth in there. It just really brings it, brings it to life, I think. Okay. Um, let's work on these glasses for a minute while we let those nostrils dry because I do need to bring some more light color in there, but I'm going to work on the glasses. Now, if I want to use the straight red that comes in the tin in the art kits, you can. There's nothing wrong with this red. It's pretty. Um, if you wanted to darken it up a little bit though, you can mix some green into your red and you're going to get a darker red. Okay. Again, if we put too much of a complementary color in there, though, we will go brown. Or in this case, it almost goes like burgundy. Um, so you don't want to put too much of the darker color in at a time. Um, just start with a little bit. Okay. We always roll our extra off. We don't want to have too much. There we go. We can get these guys all painted in. I did go kind of dark, didn't I? Kind of dark. Oh well, after it dries, I could always pop on one more layer. So instead of trying to make my color not see through by painting thick, I can always just put a second layer on, and that also helps with making something not look see through by just popping on a quick second layer. So we kind of outline. 
and then outline. And when we do that, it gets it all filled in. And again, if you want to hide your Sharpie lines, then you totally want to paint over them any opportunity you get. Sometimes it's hard to do detail and talk. Okay. Here we go. If you have a dry spot, notice how my pinky is down. You can always rest your pinky on a dry spot on the canvas and have a little extra stabilization to keep your hands steady. Here we go. That's so cute. Some lovely glasses for our lovely llama. All right. Kind of smooth that out. Smooth that out. There we go. Okay, and then on our scarf, we kind of want to think about um, what design you want to do. Do you want to do just like a soft wintry design? Do you want to do Christmassy? Like totally do whatever design you want. Okay, no wrong answers. Okay. I'm still using that smaller flat brush with the rounded corners. Here we go. There we go. Awesome. Okay. And you guys can put whatever design you want to on your scarf. It does not have to be striped. Okay. Definitely does not have to be striped. It's up to you. Okay, so focused. It's hard not. It's hard to talk. It's hard to think about what to talk about when you're super focused, right? That's how I know when my students are not focused at school or at the studio when they're just jabbing away, jabbing away. There we go. Okay. So there's base coat number one. And that is a little darker red than what I was wanting, but that is okay um, because I can just wipe this extra out of my brush and dip into the straight red and put straight red on top. And now this is more of a cherry red instead of a deep burgundy, right? I like it. Okay, very, very, very soft touch when you're trying to put wet paint on top of wet paint, okay? Very soft touch. That way you can lay the wet paint on top of the first layer of wet paint. Sometimes it helps too to use the side of your bristles instead of the tip of your bristles. There we go. Oh, yes. Fabulous. Same thing down here. We'll do a quick little layer on top, although these may still be too wet. There we go. Try to use the side of our bristles. We can just lay that paint on instead of the tip of the bristles. There we go. Okay. And at any point, if you wanted to paint the bottom as well, you totally could, okay? So now, I'm 
get all that red out. If your water gets too mucky and yucky and it doesn't clean out your brush very well, that's okay. You can, um, what are my words? What are my words? <laughs> you can, oh, go get some fresh water. Okay. I knew my words were coming. Okay. So now I can go back to that really light tan color because I'm sure the nostrils are dry enough now and be very careful not to get into the red, but I want to make it look like she's got some fur on her nose. There we go. I think I need to kind of clean. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Okay. Got red in there. If it's too bad, you can always go with a damp paper towel and clean it out. I'm hoping I can just paint right over that. There we go. Okay. There we go. Like it didn't happen. Did it again but I did not pull it onto my llama this time, so that's good. There we go. Okay, we're gonna give her some fur right here as well. So start at that middle line and just kind of make like a smile and scoop it away to the edge. Give her a nice little hairy lip, right? Okay, now I'm gonna go into just straight white this time and give her one more layer, not quite as close together of white on top of that light, light tan that we did earlier. And I'm doing it a little further apart so that way we can still see the light tan in spots. next to those glasses or I'll have some pink hair. Straight white. There we go. Oh, so cute. So cute. Okay. Oh, there was my oopsie from earlier. Let's cover that right up. There we go. Okay. Oh, we need some straight white up here. And some straight white down here. And a little bit of straight white on here. There we go. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could paint white on the scarf where the white spots are, although you have to be careful or you're gonna drag through and get pink in it. Oops, we'll just let that dry and we'll put white on top in a minute. So realistically, it would be smarter to do this when all the red is dry or do the white first, right? Okay. There we go. Do have a little spot on the glasses to touch up where I drug some white in there earlier. There we go. Little touch up with a little brush. There we go. Okay, so now really, we just have some fun details to do on the scarf. So I am gonna take my green and I'm gonna put a little bit more in here and make it a little bit darker, just like that. There we go. And 
I am going to just sort of go right here around the edge and just give a little bit of a furry feel. So on the white spots, we'll add just a little bit of the red, just like that. Just kind of shoo, 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 shoo. just quick little dab, 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 dab. Okay, dab, 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 dab. Just right there on the edges of where the red is, or right on top of the white, close to the red. Here we go. Okay. Then I can clean this up, okay? Clean this up and get some white this time and do that on top of the red. So then we give that kind of furry, fuzzy feel to the edge of our red too just like we did on the edge of our white. Go. Here we go. Awesome. Awesome. Just like that gives it a nice kind of furry feel and it's just a little short. Joop, joop, joop. Just little quick dab, dab, dab. Dab and pull, dab and pull. Okay, now it's up to you on this next step. You could totally blow dry and um, come back to it and use your Sharpie. Totally blow dry and use your Sharpie if you want to. Or you can, if you trust yourself, use your paintbrush and we could I just drag some color on my background. Not sure how I did that. So we dip paper towel in our water cup and then we just sort of rub it off just like that. Like it never happened. Okay. So you can kind of go around and give some black in spots. Maybe not everywhere. Okay. If you want to. You don't have to do this step. It's totally up to you. Um, or if black seems too harsh, you could do like a real dark brown or a grayish color. There we go. So I'm just putting a very uneven line on the llama, okay? It does not need to be perfect at all. Anywhere that you think it could use just like a little cleaning up type effect. Um, I could put some right on the edge of the glasses. Gotta be careful though. It's very difficult to have a very gentle touch and that's what you wanna have right here is a super gentle touch. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with a very, very thick outline, okay? And again, if you like your painting without the outline, then don't even do this step. Just skip it. You can fast forward me, right? <laughs> there we go. Okay, go on the inside. And on this one, there we go. And over here, continue around. All right. Um, I go ahead and do just a little bit, real thin. There we go. Okay. So that's really pretty good. Um, if I wanted to add just a little kind of around these edges, I could. I'm not trying to make this one look perfect though because I still want it to look kind of fuzzy, right? Fuzzy scarf, fuzzy warm scarf. 
there. Okay, now I can clean this really good. Uh, two things. Number one, flip your brush upside down, just like this. Dip it in your white paint, and we can dot one eye, dot the second eye. I will say, if you're not careful, your eyes will look like little Hershey Kisses, so you got to be really careful with your dots, okay? And we can put a little highlights and spots. We can put a little shine on these glasses. Kind of brings it to life a little bit. just like that and my friends I think our mama is finished she's so cute just adding a little bit more white in a couple of spots okay so that my friends is our very fun furry mama from our art kids I love it love it love it all right so Thank you so much again for painting with me. I really enjoyed the process. I hope you did too. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me at Kimberly at artsyrose.com and I can totally answer any questions that you may have. You guys have a great holiday season. Be safe, be healthy, and of course, order another paint kit if you had the best time, right? Bye guys.